Uh, hi, in this short video, I'd like to clarify a few points regarding OFDMA and multi-user MIMO for 11AX or Wi-Fi 6. My name is uh, Srikant and I'm with NanoCell Networks. So first, uh, a clear up of some misconceptions. Um, uh, 11AX does not always imply scheduled transmissions because we have the old style single user transmissions. AP to one star or one star to AP following the CSMACA rules. So that remains still the bedrock of access. So let's not think that 11AX always implies scheduled transmissions. When does scheduled transmissions come into play? Scheduled transmissions come into play when we have multi-user transmissions. And they are of two types, MU-MIMO, OFDMA, and technically it could be OFDMA plus MU-MIMO. So you could say it's three types with this last type probably coming in a little later. What are we likely to see in the market first is of course OFDMA, right? With of course MU-MIMO in some select products. So generally multi-user transmission implies AP can send simultaneously, uh, either by separating things on the frequency axis or spatial axis or a combination to multiple users okay. and can schedule multiple users to do a similar thing which is really where the scheduled business comes in but remember it 11ax does not imply all transmissions are scheduled okay so there is a lot of if to the scheduling so let's brief that OFDMA so what were we doing so far we were basically taking a bandwidth 20, 40, 80 or 160, splitting it into subcarriers and sending data to one per time, either AP to star or star to AP. It doesn't matter which direction it was. Now what are we doing? We are basically splitting that bandwidth, whichever 20, 40, 80, 160 into RUs as small as about 2 megahertz with some granularities and simultaneously on a time axis sending to multiple people or asking them to send to the AP which is where scheduling comes in okay and the separation is as you can see on the so-called orthogonal subcarrier or frequency axis okay uh, MU MIMO basically implies what we call full bandwidth MU MIMO uses the, all the subcarriers but uses the same subcarriers for more than one user and if it's on downlink, it's AP to multiple stars. And if it's on the uplink, multiple stars sending to the AP. And a combination of OFDMA plus MU MIMO would mean, let's say you split it first in the frequency axis, OFDMA, and then in one of those RUs, again of a size large enough as specified in the standard, you could now do MU MIMO. Okay, so that is the combination, which is probably going to take some time for uh, products to appear in the market. So that's a, in a nutshell what OFDMA uh, could potentially do. Of course, MU MIMO as we saw, full bandwidth MU MIMO would mean in the full 20, 40, 80 or 160, we are sending simultaneously to multiple users and that involves what we call downlink MU beam forming as shown in a representative figure like this. Okay. This of course involves feedback, etc. and I have spoken about it in the uh, other presentations. Uplink MU MIMO, which was something that I spoke, focused on earlier as well in another presentation, basically involves a similar idea of having the full bandwidth uplink MU MIMO would mean that I would do my 20, 40, 80, or 160, and in that entire bandwidth, everybody would use the entire bandwidth, but they would be separated on the spatial stream axis. Everything, of course, scheduled, okay, which is where the scheduled axis comes in. The trigger frame is a common framework for both scheduling for OFDMA, multi-user MIMO, etc. Of course, we also harped on the differences between DL and UL MU MIMO in one of my previous presentations, so I'm not going to repeat that again. So just to end, uh, we have a comparison of OFDMA versus MU MIMO. OFDMA is relatively less complex because the spatial separation is uh, a little bit more involved from the signal processing and a beam forming perspective which is what you have to do either at the TX or at the RX. There is no sounding or feedback in OFDMA, both on downlink and uplink. Downlink MU MIMO involves elaborate sounding and feedback. OFDMA has some interesting advantages where uplink uh, low SNR scenarios can also be boosted by use of a smaller bandwidth. Okay, uh, 
generally mu mimo because of the sort of uh, overlap of signals in the spatial axis would require sophisticated signal processing which generally tends to work in good SNR conditions with good channel estimates etc. Okay. And of course numbers are also very large when you look at the advertising potential of OFDMA where you can see I can pack up to 74 um, in MU MIMO we have numbers of max of 8 of course the combination can give you really big numbers but that's a you know, interesting potential for OFDMA in terms of certain uh, numerical gains. Of course if you look at MU MIMO whenever the conditions allow and when it's appropriate and we'll talk about it later when there might be some suitable conditions you can see much clearer spectral efficiency enhancements. Okay. So that gives you a small idea and of course more details we will go into in future presentations or in some of the training sessions. As usual uh, if you want to look at our offerings please look at uh, nanocellnetworks.com and thanks for listening.